the Quran contradicts science. Assalamu alaikum. Sometimes, or actually too often, we come across people that say that the Quran cannot be the word of God because some verses contradict science. Now, if that was the truth, then they would have a point, right? But they come with verses like the one that we're going to analyze today. So let's see what science actually has to say about that. Let me take you to the Quran, chapter 23, verse 13 and 14. God made humans from a drop in a secure repository, then developed the drop into a clinging clot, then developed the clot into a lump, then developed the lump bones, then clothed the bones with flesh. Now, some translations say developed the lump into bones, but in the Arabic Quran, there's no word into, so let's not put it there, okay? But we do want to know the last part, clothed the bones with flesh. But before we say anything, we're going to educate ourselves. So stick with me. We're going to read about human embryology. The stages of differentiation in stem cells of a human embryo. Fertilization and zygote formation. After fertilization, the sperm and egg combine to form a zygote, which is a single totipotent cell. A totipotent cell has the potential to differentiate into any cell type, including extra embryonic tissues like the placenta. As the zygote undergoes rapid cell division, it transforms into a multicellular structure called a marula and subsequently into a blastokist. The blastokist is composed of a trophoblast, that is the outer layer that contributes to forming the placenta, and the inner cell mass, the inner group of cells which will develop into the embryo itself. Gastrulation. Gastrulation is the process where the blastokist reorganizes into a three-layered structure known as the gastroduct. The three germ layers formed are the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. The ectoderm will give rise to the central nervous system, the skin, and various other structures. The mesoderm will form bones, muscles, flesh, cartilage, blood and connective tissues. The endoderm will develop into the internal organs like the lungs, liver and gastrointestinal tract. Now, we want to know what happens first, bones or muscles, so we're going to focus on the mesoderm, okay? Mesoderm form besides the neural tube into paired structures called somites. There are three types of somites. The sclerotome, that will form the vertebra and ribs, the dermatome will develop into the dermis of the skin, and the myotome that will give rise to skeletal muscles. Now, what comes first? Sequence of events. Sclerotome. The ventromedial part of each somite differentiates into the sclerotome. Cells from the sclerotome migrate around the notochord and neural tube to form the vertebra and associated structures such as ribs. Dermatome. The dorsolateral part of each somite gives rise to the dermatome, which will contribute to the dermis of the skin. Myotome. The cells of the somite that remain after the sclerotome has migrated will form the myotome. The myotome subsequently differentiates into muscle cells, contributing to skeletal muscle formation. Conclusion. The sclerotome differentiates and begins its formation process slightly earlier than the myotome, which forms the flesh. Therefore, in the development timeline, the sclerotome precedes the formation of the flesh. <laughs> so, what comes first? Bones or flesh? Bones. So it happens exactly like the Quran says, because the substance, that clinging clot, cannot be labeled as flesh because it is still just a ball of cells, okay? In the process of differentiation of cells, it is first the bone cells and later the dermis and the muscles. So, so that is that. You know, and maybe that is the reason 
why the highest concentration of stem cells is in the bone marrow. Uh, so the next time when you criticize something of the Quran, educate yourself first, you know. Because some people even think that the Quran contradicts science because the Quran says that the sun runs in an orbit. And they think that the sun is stationary. Now, before you go to the comment section and say things, please go to the website of the NASA before you comment, okay? Why did I refer to Islam? Well, it doesn't feel like I reverted to Islam. It feels like I just found the truth, you know? It's like, imagine if you were adopted, but you only find out when you are an adult. So you thought you knew the truth, but it turns out you didn't. The same happened when I started reading the Quran, you know? In my particular case, all my life I've always believed in only one God. And the only Christian prayer that I know is our Father in Heaven. And if you have any doubts about who God is or who Jesus is, then listen to the words of that prayer. It goes like this. I only know it in my native language, Dutch, because I learned it since I was a child, but it goes like this, okay? Onze Vader die in de hemel zijt, uw naam wordt geheiligd, uw rijk komen. Uw wil geschieden op aarde zoals in de hemel. Geef ons heden ons dagelijks brood en vergeef ons onze schuld, opdat wij ook anderen hun schuld vergeven. En leid ons niet in bekoring, maar verlos ons van het kwade. Amen. Our Father who is in heaven, holy is your name. Let your kingdom come. Let your will prevail on earth like in heaven. Forgive our sins and do not lead us into temptation, but free us from evil. And that reminds me of the first chapter in the Quran. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Praise be to God, the Lord of the universe. Most gracious, most merciful. Master of the day of judgment. You alone we worship. You alone we ask for help. Guide us on the right path. The path of those whom you've blessed. Not of those who have deserved wrath. Nor of the strayers. And this is the core of Islam. That's it. Worship God alone. And do not idolize anyone. Also not the Prophet Muhammad. Because the Quran says all messengers are equal. Make no distinction between them. The Quran is all you need. You find light, truth and answers to the most important questions you could possibly have. Why we live, why we are here. It's all in the Quran. And I want to share something more about the Quran because it has been composed beyond human capabilities. We only found out about 30 years ago since the computer that the Quran is mathematically coded and it all goes around the number 19, the chapters verses everything comes down to 19 or a multiplication of that not even a computer could generate a text like this you know the quran is all you need and don't let anyone tell you like you need a teacher you need an imam no it is the guidance for mankind this was written to us for us to read and it, there are many verses that say it has been made easy to understand. Are you willing to learn? Albert Einstein says there's only one thing more dangerous than ignorance. That is arrogance. Don't let anyone stand between you and God. Not a prophet, an idol, not a teacher, no one. You and God. You and the Quran. It's not complicated. It's not a complicated religion. Submit to God. Once you read why we are here, you understand what we are supposed to do in life. There's one more thing that I want to share. That is in chapter 2, verse 62 and in chapter 5, verse 69. It says, those who believe, those who are Jewish, the Christians, the converts, anyone who believes in God, in the day of judgment and leads a righteous life will have their reward with the Lord. 
they have nothing to fear, nor will they grieve. Alhamdulillah. Read the Quran, okay? Bye.